first freestyle competitor to enter the ring, number 1058, Dire Maker, ridden by Christina Aaron. The horse is a seven-year-old dark bay gelding, bred in New York and now based in Aledo, Texas with Christina Aaron. A horse that made 36 starts, had four wins, and earned more than $150,000. And Christina, whenever you're ready, you can give us a signal and we're ready to go for you. Yeah. So Ashley and Donna, this is a really fun discipline. Ashley, you were a top 10 finisher in freestyle in the makeover. Uh, yeah, this is always uh, one of my favorites every year to watch. You have no idea what you're going to get. And with all the the work we're doing with our, our videos and interviews, I did not get to see a lot of this. So I'm really excited to see uh, what this finale brings. Uh, Donna, this is your first time watching a freestyle competition, correct? It's also the first time I've ever seen a tap dancer in the middle of an arena during a dressage <laughs> <laughs> routine. So I'm really interested to see where this goes and excited really for all of them. But this, the uh, suspense is building here. So within this freestyle, you have to demonstrate uh, a number of compulsory movements. Uh, which you have to show the halt with Im immobility. You need to do backing with a minimum of four steps, a large figure eight at the trot or jog, uh, and the canter or lope. Um, in each direction, you need to show simple or flying changes, and you are judged individually on those movements, but then also on your degree of difficulty and the demeanor of your horse, your harmony, how well you work together. Um, and aside from that, the, the rest is open. I can tell you, in previous years one change is there will be no pyro pyrotechnics this year but aside from that uh, most everything you could think of is open so do you think the little girl is out in the middle just to distract us and just watch the little girl and not watch <laughs> the horse i've had a hard time taking my eyes off the little girl but the, every time i look at the horse he seems to be doing everything perfectly ashley yes i think it's out there to distract the horse to show you that this horse can work in this big environment with all of these different things going on that's obviously a, a jarring sound for probably most thoroughbreds to see a little girl dancing around and having that noise come out mm -hmm. um, I've seen thoroughbreds spook when they walk on leaves so <laughs> <laughs> to, to show all of uh, this just gives a, a, a extra a degree of difficulty with all these beautiful dressage movements that are going along at the same time. Earlier in today's competition, we saw Thoroughbred spook from his own image on the screen. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm sure it is quite a distraction for him, but he doesn't seem to be letting it get in the way of listening to his rider. If there's definitely a, a different level of preparation that goes into something like oh, this. Oh, and now here's a dog. Here we go. There's freestyle. See? <laughs> I don't actually know if that was... <laughs> I don't think that was intentional. intentional. <laughs> but that's one of the cool things about freestyle is you, you watch and you're like, do they really mean to do that? And yeah, a lot of the times they do. I wasn't sure about that, but they didn't seem to care. The horse did not seem to no, be. No, it's a point in the horse's favor either way. <laughs> the horse probably was like, now what, mom, yeah. with his rider? Obviously, they've exposed this horse pretty well to novel distractions. I don't know, Don, if you followed any racing from Australia, but there was this famous sprinter, Chautauqua, and at the end of his career, he wouldn't leave the starting gate. So our fantasy was to have a freestyle routine where he just stood there and everything else was going on around him. <laughs> I like it.
Christina Aaron and Dire Maker. Not just them, but the great tap dancer in the middle, too. <laughs> Dyer Maker in New York bread and the aftercare organizations in New York have been longtime supporters of the thoroughbred makeover. Donna, that was your first exposure to a freestyle routine. Yeah, and you just never know what to expect on these freestyle routines. The closest I've actually come to seeing one is what you all showed on the video earlier. And I guess you can expect just about anything. Partway through when the dog ran out into the arena, we weren't sure if that was part of the routine or not, but apparently it was not. Either way, then, that's a point in the favor for the horse. To whatever distractions were there, I think that was the point. The horse showed some lovely movements regardless of the environment. So our next competitor that will be in the arena is rider number 1102, Lady Margaret, who will also be a finalist in competitive trail. And Lady Margaret will be ridden by Jeff Damphouse, originally from Windsor, Canada. And now based in Oklahoma. And I was talking to Jeff yesterday, and Jeff said that his cousin was the famous professional hockey player, Vincent Damfus. So, excelling on the ice and in the arena, the Damp House family. Great breeding on Lady Margaret, sired by Pioneer of the Nile out of the Hennessy Dam Red Cognac. But racing-wise, nine starts at some of the top tracks, Saratoga, Churchill, Keeneland, and Oaklawn. Best finish was a fourth place finish at Oaklawn, retired in 2019. Jeff, the world champion trainer and judge from Oklahoma who's been showing horses since he was five and has trained hundreds of horses off the track for their second careers throughout his time working with horses and has made the finals with this horse not only in the freestyle discipline but also coming up in competitive trail. Jonathan, I imagine that he's ridden in many different disciplines, being from Oklahoma and now seeing him out here doing a dressage routine. And I think that's what he's going to showcase. Like any good performer, there's going to be a, well, for horses, we'd say a tack change. Oh, I don't think they're done just yet.
This is the equivalent of a pit stop. So if you're watching the live stream, we're all in suspense as to what we're going to see next. The music has changed. So now we have this country music playing, building up a little bit of suspense, thinking we might have a horse coming out here running. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A wardrobe change. Kind of like if you're at a concert. You never know what Lady Gaga is going to come out in next. I was just you, thinking Lady Gaga. You don't Gaga. know what Jeff Dampouse is going to do either. All right, here, he here we go. <laughs> oh, wow. What a change for horse and rider. I think they had a few people working on this change back there. That's a lot to, lot to transition. Now, is he a cowboy that also does dressage? Or is he a dressage rider that'll also uh, sit in a, in a Western? And I is this thoroughbred a, a racehorse that will also let a rope and a lasso go over his head? Or is he a horse that can handle oh, a rope a roper and a lasso who race? and yeah. also can race? <laughs> Either way, the horse looks very comfortable and natural in both outfits. Wow. That's a good stop. A couple of turn backs. Always got to add a little showmanship in there. Make sure you uh, acknowledge the crowd and get them excited too. I wanted to holler myself until I remembered this microphone was right in front of me. And that's the... That's the five minutes for Jeff Damphouse and Lady Margaret. Jeff says, horses aren't just about riding their way of life. Jeff has realized over the years how important it is to take care of your mind and body. And he says that riding and handling a horse should require a tremendous amount of discipline and being aware of every movement. Riding is about being fair to the animal beneath you and asking the horse to listen instead of demanding it. Jeff truly believes that the way a person rides and handles a horse is a reflection of themselves. Let's hear it for Jeff Damphouse and Lady Margaret. And if you like what you've seen, you'll see them again because they are finalists in the competitive trail discipline as well. There are seven horses throughout the day today that we'll see competing in multiple disciplines. And in this freestyle, there are three multi-discipline finalists, two for trail and one for dressage. And the horse that also competed in dressage is the one that we'll see next. Actually, one dressage. It's number 1065 Elbow Room, ridden by Helen Pianca. Helen riding side saddle, and Helen, whenever you're ready, we'll have the music queued up for you. Looks like this routine is a family affair. <sighs> I 
Ashley, I just cannot imagine riding side saddle. Having ridden horses my whole entire life, I've always ridden with a leg on each side. <laughs> so I have the utmost respect for anyone who even tries it. I mean, it, it makes logical sense to have a leg on each side and communicate and the level of control and balance to be able to do that. Now, you're, you're pretty securely held in there um, underneath the... See, it's got a little bounce there, and she, she stayed pretty well stuck to that saddle. It's, her legs are crossed over, and then you grip over these two blocks that go over the leg almost. So it helps keep you pretty secure, but uh, you still are, you just have that one little uh, whip on the outside to help control that outside. So you got to have a, a good, strong relationship to be able to, to communicate really well with your horse on the side saddle. We had one kid who did a tap dance routine and the other who's doing a kicking dirt routine. <laughs> you know, but he's horses, got the light up shoes. <laughs> horses don't like those bald spots in the middle of the arena, so he's doing everybody a favor yes. who's going to ride next by covering up that flat bald spot. I did notice that after. I was like, oh, that's that's a scary flat spot in, in the center that I could see some horses uh, looking off there. Absolutely. And just saw a really nice uh, flying change. I think the kid's supposed to feed the horse a carrot and the kid's shaking his head. <laughs> Come on, man. The baby's dressed a little bit like a carrot. I hope the horse doesn't make a mistake. <laughs> oh, there we go. Taking the kids for a little ride. Oh, That's one way cute. to get a carriage ride. <laughs> I just want to say as a horse husband, I think the star of this routine is the husband <laughs> managing the kids, he's being got a little supportive extra, with the horses. There's a little extra wrangling he's got to do there. They're probably a little more unpredictable than the, the thoroughbred. Jonathan, I'll give you that. He deserves more credit than he otherwise would get had you not pointed it out. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen seconds. And that is quite the family routine for Helen Pianca and family and the chestnut gelding elbow room, another of the New York breads in the finale for freestyle.
To be fair, I only said that it was time for the horse and rider. <laughs> Yay! And I was saying on the live stream, can we give it up for all horse husbands? So after Elbow Room and Helen Pianca, next, number 1132, Nux, written by Megan Hems. And Megan, whenever you're ready, we'll start your music. How much riding have each of you two done blindfolded? <laughs> well, I can honestly say I have accidentally done that when I've run out of goggles, <laughs> but only briefly. And then I had to take down my last goggle and ride almost blind, but never completely blindfolded. That was impressive. I, I do make my students sometimes close their eyes so they can learn how to feel the horse a little more, but it's not for this this long. so. It's a great way to learn how to feel what, what's going on underneath you, but I don't know how our horse knows where exactly to go right now. And you always have to have at least one tarp represented in a, in a freestyle competition. I think the tarp in this case, number one, it's impressive that he'll go over it, but at number two, it sort of serves for her to know that she's in the middle part of the arena. If she can't see, she can at least hear. And that takes a lot of practice to, to know your horse's stride and know where you're going to be uh, just by feel and knowing strides. Sure, we don't realize because we're not blindfolded, but she is that when she asked him to go from a jog to a canter, he was really headed toward a wall and she had to really know her um, yeah. arena.
Oh, those two are really, really connected. They're going so well together. They've put, spent a lot of time together, a lot of work into that, and that horse totally trusts and accepts anything that she's throwing at him. Not going to oh, lie, mutual. I'm a big baby, and it's really hard for me to talk right now because <laughs> I feel really emotional about that. To watch it, it's a really special thing. I love those routines that can bring out that emotion. Looked like for half of the second he thought he was uh, going to go out that out gate, but he listened really <laughs> well to her. What does the flag say? No one fights alone. Beautiful. Isn't it, yeah, her story is the, the one with the, the cancer survivors. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And this is the horse that um, she originally wasn't going to keep. She was taking him to somebody else and fell in love with him. You're right. There's just a great connection. Yeah. That happens sometimes. Well, what did you all think of Megan Hems and Knox? Still crying over here. That was incredible, the trust that you can see between horse and rider. A horse that Megan wasn't even intending to keep, but was hauling horses off of the Finger Lakes racetrack, as Donna just mentioned on the, the live stream, in New York for second chance thoroughbreds. And Meg said it was love at first sight with that horse, Nux. So setting up next in the ring, the leaders after the prelim rounds, number 1189, Thunderous Affair, written by Lindsay Partridge. This pair will also be finalists in trail, and it was Lindsay's trail winner, Soar, that won the first Thoroughbred Makeover Championship when the event was first held here at the Kentucky Horse Park back in 2015. Thunderous Affair, a young four-year-old gray mare, bred in Kentucky, and came through the Cantor Michigan training program, and Lindsay's all set to go for her routine. Lindsay every year has been a contender in this freestyle division. Second last year, second in 2015. That year also won competitive trail and was the thoroughbred makeover champion. This horse is very young. You can tell by the dark gray complexion, a four-year-old. 
riding bridleless. And it's lovely to see how calm and relaxed this horse is. She has a great starting foundation of just trust and relaxation. Not a bobble at all. It's just really hard to imagine that this is an off-track thoroughbred, right? Like, um, we realize that you can train them to do a lot of things, but you, ha you have to keep in mind, this has been in a short period of time, going bridleless, an awful lot of trust. Obviously, she's a professional horse trainer, which helps, but at the same time, it's just a beautiful display of the versatility of the thoroughbred. But as you were also saying, she, she just had a child, and I've known if you've followed her through any social media, like, she she has not gotten to put as much time in this horse as she would have as another another year. Luckily, it's, it's 2020, so they had some extra time, but everyone else competing had so much time while she was having a baby. Four yeah. months ago, she was eight months pregnant. Yes. Three months ago, she had a baby, so yeah. we know she missed some time. Yeah. <laughs> And that little filly just does not seem to care about anything at all. Not only is she bridleless, she also just has a pad on that horse. She's not riding with any stirrups either. Yeah, essentially bareback and bridleless. Just a neck strap and a pad. Lindsay once came to Kentucky for the makeover and brought her horse into the hotel lobby. It, it was a photo op, but I mean, what a... <laughs> nice dismount. Those are impressive gymnastics. <laughs> I can't even get my dog to do that. <laughs> I think his little kick said, okay, enough of that. <laughs> She's been so game for all of the things. If the kick was a little off mark, I think everyone is still impressed with what we're seeing. Fifteen, fifteen seconds. It's not your typical driving setup. <laughs> Thunderous affair and Lindsay Partridge. Well, that was certainly entertaining. An incredibly elaborate routine. I don't know, someone needs to tell that horse to calm down. Ashley just said on the live stream that someone needs to tell that horse to calm down a little bit. <laughs> well, that is the finals for Freestyle and, and Donna and, and Ashley. Um, the variety that Freestyle brings the crowd-pleasing natures of the routine. It, it, it's a wonderful discipline, and uh, I certainly don't want to be in the position the judges are in to have to... I think it's also the toughest discipline to judge because you're going to see such variety and so many different goals that these, these riders have for their horses. Yeah, to see Joe go from the dressage pattern to essentially a reigning pattern, a Western pattern, and then to see what um, Megan Hems did with her horse, Nux, 
uh, as you all know, because we were on the live stream. I, I couldn't even contain my emotions. It was such a beautiful routine. But then after that, we see Lindsay come back after having just had a baby three months ago. So as um, Ashley and I were saying, we know that four months ago, she was eight months pregnant. Three <laughs> months ago, she had a baby. So obviously, there was a lot of preparation that went into this, but we don't know when that happened. It was all really impressive. It was incredible. And Ashley, you're a former top 10 in, in freestyle. And your thoughts on how the discipline went this year? It's really great to see how, how many different interpretations there are of the freestyle, how you can come in with a number of different props and have this really exciting, you know, fun, joyous uh, routine that we saw last. But then uh, the majority of the ones that made the finale came in very minimal props and still had a great representation of partnership with their horse and a really fun freestyle um, that showed all the different components. So uh, it, there are obviously benefits to coming in with a lot of props, but you don't need them to show all the, the important things. You're right. You can use the props, or you can actually just show that partnership between horse and rider when it's, it's just the two of them. And, and so I'd say one of the things, there's a lot of beauty in, in the freestyle routine that comes out. And yeah, it did get emotional for us at, at certain points seeing some of those routines. I don't know if I've ever made it through a year where there's one that doesn't catch me and, and <laughs> makes me tear up. There's, there's something about seeing that connection and, and, and the freedom they have to, to represent it and however they want. Every year there's at least one, if not more, that catch me that way. So we're just awaiting the final tabulation of the scores for freestyle and we saw a few New York breads in the freestyle finals so just want to make mention of the Empire State Success Story Top New York Bread Horse Award. It's sponsored by the New York Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association, the New York Racing Association and the New York Thoroughbred Breeders Incorporated. They've all teamed up to recognize the highest placed New York bread in the competition. Freestyle was sponsored by New Start, and thank you to our judges, Michael Alway of Alway Horsemanship and Julie Robbins of the Aikman Horsemanship Academy. So we have the results in for Freestyle sponsored by New Start. Finishing in 10th place in freestyle for the class of 2020, rider number 1186, Tempstad and Nicola Dines. In 9th place, 1004, Alan Tom and Kristen McDonald. Eighth place, number 1141, Park Hill Diamond and the Marble Hill Farm Equestrian Team. And they are the top finishing team in the freestyle discipline. And Tempestad and Nicola Dines were the top finishing amateurs. Seventh place, 1169, Shell Benny and Christina Aaron. Sixth place, number 1120, Monet Mo Problems and Jean French. Now to the top five that all competed today. In fifth place, number 1058, Dire Maker and Christina Aaron. In fourth place, number 1065, Elbow Room and Helen Pianca. Hey, Helen will do video um, 24. Uh, we'll go uh, actually 25 next. Video okay, yeah. after this finishes? At when this finishes. In third place, number 1102, Lady Margaret and Jeff Damphouse.
second place, number 1132, Nux and Megan Hems. And they are also the winner of the Best Conditioned Award, sponsored by Nina Bonney. And the class of 2020 winner for the Mega Makeover in Freestyle, sponsored by New Start, a score of 205.88. Congratulations to rider number 1189, Lindsay Partridge, aboard Thunderous Affair. And they are also the winners of the Thoroughbred Charities of America Award. Let's hear it for the top finishers in freestyle. You're welcome to take a lap around the ring. So following the crowd-pleasing routines in freestyle, what we have next are routines that will turn the energy up with barrel racing is our next discipline, and then we'll all go for a trail ride with competitive trail and close out the competition by sorting some cattle in the ranch work discipline, and that will be concluded by the crowning of the thoroughbred makeover champion as well as voting for the people's choice award